Today I'm going to be taking a look at CPU pinning in Proxmox and how it can be used and what performance benefits it brings to VMs, especially VMs that need low latency and guaranteed performance. I'm going to be first discussing what CPU pinning is, go over how it can be used in Proxmox, and then I'm going to go over the performance results for my testing. You can use the chapters below to skip to a specific part if you want to see that now. Modern OSs have thousands of threads running at any given time that have to be split between the limited number of cores on a CPU. So time is cut between the different processes so it runs process A, B, C very quickly so it feels like everything is running at any given time. But only a few programs are actually running. So that can cause latency and performance issues if you have a lot of programs running and the VMs or other programs need to fight for time. CPU pinning is one way to guarantee that there's a given amount of CPU space for those things. So think of it this way, instead of having four CPU cores assigned to all the programs, you have two CPU cores assigned to all the programs, and then two assigned to just that VM. But the other VM that has those dedicated two cores always knows it has two cores worth of performance. The other tasks won't try to take that performance from it. I'd only use this for edge cases where you really need it, as normally it isn't a huge benefit, and one great thing with having VMs is how it can dynamically allocate resources, so you don't have to manually set things up. And I find if you have a decent sized processor and memory for the workload you have, CPU pinning rarely has a major impact. But in some use cases like a gaming VM with a dedicated pass through GPU or things where you need a low latency server, CPU pinning will make sure that latency stays low and that other tasks can affect it. Let's take a look at how that can be implemented in Proxmox. Unfortunately, the Proxmox web UI has no way to do this. The only control the Proxmox web UI gives you of how a VM's processes are compared to other VMs is CPU units, which tells the scheduler how much priority one VM should have compared to another. For example, on this VM 100, I've set it to 16384, which means it should get more time on the processor compared to other VMs if they have to share time. I also tested CPU units in my results that I will show in a little bit. But before I want to talk about exactly how CPU pinning should be used, let's talk a little bit about how cores are laid out in Linux so it makes a little bit more sense of why you're assigning specific cores to a specific VM. So I'm running LS Topo on the right of the screen right here, and it shows the layout of my system. So I can see I have one NUMA node, or a chunk of memory, I have an L3 cache on my processor, I then have six parts of L2 cache, each of those are one core, which has two logical hyper-threaded cores each. Then I can see these P0 numbers, which is the process number that you'll be using in Linux, and it goes from 1 through 5 through all the cores, and then it goes back up again through 6 to 11. So cores number 0 and 6 in Linux are on the same physical core using hyper-threading, or SMT. And that means if you use 0 a lot, the performance of 6 will be limited because all the caches and compute units are shared between those. I typically give them as a pair to VMs if I'm doing core pinning, partially because of some security issues with using one heart of a logical core and maybe stealing data from it using speculative execution or other attacks. The other thing is, because those cores are using all but the same parts, assigning both of them to one VM will be much better at guaranteeing performance if you want to do that for a VM. Now let's take a look at how the actual cores can be assigned. And this is done using task set in Linux. On the left of my screen right here, I can see I'm using task set, and if I run like dash p process id, so just a random process on my system, I see 1f, which is a hex value of the core I can run on. I can also use dash cp, and then like 0 through 4 example, and that'll tell me that I actually changed it from 0 to 4, which it already was, back to 0 to 3, 4. I can also use like comma, so I can do 0, 4, and 7 for example. And if I use just dash p, I can see that's now the hex value of 91 for my processor. There's some online converters if you want to convert this hex value to the actual number of cores, but you can also just set it again and it'll set it to those specific cores. You can use commas to do have different numbers and you can use dashes to show a range. And using task set in a script lets you do it fully automated for a VM. So on the Proxmox forums, this member right here actually created a little script that I'm using and works very well for this task. And what this script does is it looks at the ID of the VM and the part of the setup that the VM is currently running in as told to it by Proxmox and uses the set of processors that you told the VM can use and then if it's at a specific part of its startup it looks at, finds all the IDs of that VM and then uses task set to give it so they can only use the processors that you set above. In order to assign a hook script to the VM you have to do it in the config file for a VM. 
So if I want to do that on my system, I can use Vim or another text editor to edit slash etc slash pve slash commute server slash vm number dot conf. And looking at the top of this file right now, I have the part of my IO storage I'm using. It has to support snippets, so I'm using butter file in this case, colon snippets, so the part of the storage, and then the script name. And then once I add it to a VM here, I can go switch over to the Proxmox web UI, and then looking under options, I can see that hook script right here. And now that means that this hook script will be run at different stages of the VM, and it will lock its threads to specific cores. And then to demonstrate that CPU pinning is working, I have Cinebench multi-threaded running on my VM, and if I take a look at HTOP, I can see it's only running on these four threads, and it's not bouncing around at all like it typically would be if you did not pin the CPU cores. But just using a hook script with pass set to a VM is not enough to actually pin the cores to the VM, because that VM can only use those cores, other VMs can still use those cores too, or other system processes, so they might still have to fight for time. So you want to make sure other VMs and processes don't share those cores to make sure it isn't fighting for time now. So one way to do that is to assign everything to a hook script. So in this case, I've made a lot of different hook scripts that only give it two cores and then one that gives it four, so I can assign everything. Another way to do that if you want to make it a little bit simpler is have for VMs that you want to have specific cores, have maybe like a group of four, a group of four, a group of four, and then a group of everything else for the rest of the VMs that you don't need pinning. But this means you've got to make sure all of your VMs are actually pinned to something. The other problem is this CPU pinning only works for user processes. It doesn't work for kernel processes because those cannot be used, moved or pinned using task set. Those are run on whatever processes they kind of started on. So you actually need to go in the beginning and tell the kernel don't run it on those processes. The way to lock the system away from specific CPU cores so you can assign it to a VM and a VM only is to use ISO CPUs. This is a kernel parameter, so it must be assigned at boot, and to set that boot setting is to set the grub configuration file. So under slash etc slash default slash grub, you can set one of these grub command line Linux, and then ISO CPUs equals and a number of cores. And those are the cores that the Linux kernel will not use unless you specifically allocate it using task set or a similar process. So no matter what you do on that system, they just won't have any usage. Ta HTOP and other system monitors will show those cores as existing just of zero usage until you've assigned a process to them. Now I'm going to go over the test methodology that I used to get my benchmark results. So this is my test Proxmox server, so it only has my test VMs on it and nothing else. I have this Cinebench Windows VM, and this runs Cinebench and Latency Monitor. Cinebench is my way of measuring CPU performance, then I'm using DPC Latency Checker in Windows to check kind of the average latency. So right now it looks really nasty because the system's being pushed. And this is kind of a way of estimating if this is bad, probably latency and stutters in games and audio and other latency specific programs will also be very bad. Because sometimes performance can have a little hit, but latency can have a massive hit. So it might be fast at running CPU code, but it'd have a very high latency if new things are needed to be done. I then had other processes that I started to run in the background to push the system to its limits. So I first ran each test situation with just Cinebench, and then I ran an encoding test in the background, and this little VM has a script that runs FFmpeg all the time in the background. So right now it looks like I have FFmpeg using all those CPU cores, and it just will continually encode the same file. I then had a iperf VM and an iperf server, so that would do a lot of network copying data over the virtual switch on this case. So it'll often be in the like tens of gigabits per second to push that virtual switch to its limit. And then I had an IO task that would create a random file, compress the random file, and then check some of the random file to push IO really hard. And the reason I did a lot of networking and IO tests is because I wanted to actually push a lot of those system processes, not just the raw CPU. Because your VM isn't just competing with time from other VMs, it's also competing from the time from system processes and kernel processes. So I want to make sure that I can be able to control all of those and pushing the system to its limits using the integrated system things like I.O. and networking I found was the best way to do that. And here's the results of my 20 different test situations that I ran on the system. I'm going to talk about some conclusions here. I should put some graphs on the screen if you want to see it. And I'm going to include the raw data in below in a Google Sheets if you want to take a look at that and do whatever you want with it.
So for each of the test situations, I ran Cinebench multi-threaded, single-threaded, and then three latencies over 30 seconds with the peak latency. So here's some of the more exciting results I found after running all of these tests. So the first thing is CPU pinning with ISO CPUs had the best way to control the CPUs with very minimal differences in performance with other changes on the system load. So I could push it quite hard with pretty much no difference to latency or Cinebench scores. Whereas compared to not controlling at all, there was huge differences in performance and latency, especially latency, which went from normal to very high amounts of latency in the peaks. Using it without ISO CPUs appears to be a bit better than doing nothing, but those system processes were stealing a lot of time from that VM still, so ISO CPUs make sure the VM has its own time on that process and doesn't have to share it with the system or other VMs. Changing the CPU units for the VM did not seem to do anything substantial for me, so I'm not sure if I used it wrong or if it just is useless or if I was just pushing the system hard enough that it couldn't just prioritize in any meaningful way, but I didn't see it doing anything that would make sense here. And the other thing I want to note with CPU pinning is because of hyperthreading, if you're not using all the other cores on the system, it'll give it four threads on four different cores. That'll give it significantly more performance than when I gave it four threads on each pair of cores. But when I started pushing the system harder, it would limit itself to essentially the lower performance of only those cores. And that brings up one of the advantages of virtualization without pinning is it's better at dynamically allocating resources. It knows if you're not pushing the extra resources, which CPU cores will give you better performance, but if you're pushing everything harder, it'll use those hyper-threading kind of to its full ability. And that's why I typically don't like to turn CPU pinning on unless you really need it. And I think the thing to show is if you really need it, turning on CPU pinning plus ISO CPUs can have a massive decrease in latency and have almost no performance impact no matter what the rest of the system is doing. Hopefully this information was helpful for you and your Proxmox system and let me know what type of results you've gotten from CPU tweaking and especially if CPU units have been useful for you. I'd love to see how exactly CPU units is working for people because it didn't seem to do anything for me.